these influencers are out here trying to convince us to give companies our coin and by god they are succeeding hello beautiful people hi my name is mia and this is my virtual vanity a place where we both love makeup and we are quite critical of it and you know what I just had dinner, my stomach is full, my chakras are aligned, mercury is out of retrograde at least for the next half hour while I do my digestion and I was thinking what better time to film a video now that I'm in such a, a good mood, like food makes everything better guys. It, it does. Today I want to do a full face of YouTube made me buy it with reviews. I will talk about all of the products that YouTube made me buy across the years. Well, not all of them, but at least a full face of them because let's be honest, I am... I have been influenced numerous times and let's say that 9 times out of 10, I'm pretty happy with what I get, including with these products. Like, I'm pretty happy with the stuff that YouTube beauty influencers made me buy. This is mostly a drugstore with an indie thrown in, really uh, budget friendly, what can I say even when I'm influenced to buy shit, I am a cheap ass bitch. So there is that. So if you're interested in seeing a full face of YouTube made me buy it with reviews, then keep on watching and you're gonna see how everything performs on my face. Also, if my face looks a bit yellow, don't at me. This is not the best shade match for me, but it happens. So here we are, a bare face and all. Let's start with priming. And this is the e.l.f. Natural Glow Lotion, which apparently is this sort of uh, glowy, dewy primer that can be used both as a base under makeup and as you know a glowy sort of type of situation like sort of a very natural I am touched by the gods uh, I, I have been blessed with beautiful skin I'm glowy from within I'm like pregnant but not pregnant you know what I mean this was mentioned by Alana Davidson who honestly could talk to me about paint and I would still want to purchase like, she could sell me shit all day long, and I really like this product. It's a really nice, glowy sort of primer, and what I enjoy about it is that it is glowy, yes, but it doesn't have, like, visible shimmer, so you don't end up looking like you took a bath, like you took a bath in a vat full of glitter, like you're somehow the makeup joker, and that is your villain origin story. It's uh, very thin, applies evenly, applies easily. I like to apply it with my fingers. Uh, if you are not a heathen like me, you can try it with a brush. Not sure about the results with that though. Going forward with foundation, I will be using the L'Oreal Infallible 24 hour fresh wear, which has been shilled by multiple beauty YouTubers. But I feel that the one that convinced me to wear it was Mariah Leonard, I feel, or Alana or Len. I remember both of them talked about it and said that they really liked it and I was like, I want a drugstore foundation that's really nice and new and medium coverage and I really want it. But in, in Romania it was actually quite expensive so it wasn't like drugstore, completely drugstore priced. So I'm gonna shake this up a bit. God, the sounds it makes, absolutely dirty. This is in 130 true beige, which is a bit too yellow and too dark for me. Store lights tricked me and I'm going to take my incredibly gross beauty blender, which is not a beauty blender, it's actually a Balea makeup sponge. And I'm going to use just one, one and a half pumps of this. If you use one and a half pumps, like I do, you can shear out the coverage quite nicely. So maybe, the match looks better than it would if you would use it enti entirely, you know? Another thing that I enjoy about this is even if, if I go heavier with the coverage, this feels like skin, so I don't feel it sitting on top of my face. It's, it's, it's just like melts very nicely.
but as you can see I don't know if you can see but on my forehead you can see that I'm a bit pinkier than this this next product I don't even have a specific youtuber it, it was chilled by everybody and hailed as the next uh, dupe for shape tape and oh my god this is so great this is like the next coming of concealer christ this is the makeup revolution conceal and define i'm wearing the shade c3 i feel i could have gone lighter but i ordered online so we gotta deal with it it tends to make my under eyes look a hundred and five years old so there is that going to use it as a base for my eyeshadow it's a uh, great at intensifying colors and not that great for staying power but I'm just going to film and then take my makeup look off so uh, I don't give a fuck I am going to use the Nabla close-up powder everything that I bought from Nabla I bought because I came across the founder of the company on youtube before finding out about the company and then i was like oh shit he has a brand so i ended up like falling in love with the brand and just if i could sleep with my nabla palettes in the same bed i would i'm just going to grab a a tiny bit of powder the thing what's left over on the and just set my under eyes with it this is really nice for setting under eyes, like it keeps everything smooth and in place. It's my only loose powder that I, that I have. And whenever I want to try a new one, I just, I'm like, you love this and it's perfectly fine. So why buy another one, you know? Um, one of my cats thinks he's Niki Lauda or some shit just running around the house thinking this is a motherfucking NASCAR race. For brows, I'm going in with the Maybelline Brow Precise Fiber Brow Enhancer, Fiber Filler, whatever. I also saw this mentioned a couple of times on YouTube, but I don't quite remember who was it that actually convinced me to buy it. I really like this because it does fill in the brows really nicely. Like you can see them visibly get a bit thicker and darker but it can also get messy really quick let me ugh. don't want to end up having to carve my brows I feel that the applicator is really weird it's got this type of weird like thin like applicator and I'm like why the hell are you trying to reinvent the wheel Maybelline can't you just put a brush a spoolie like everybody else you just gotta try and be innovative and fix what ain't broken and it's really annoying because see like it gets it tends to get on like the product itself is great but it tends to get above where i want to go with this stupid fucking thin applicator or maybe it's just because i'm blind i am mean, looking framed like a uh masterpiece but to be honest i think i'm like more modern art than classical art you know i some people enjoy this and others are like who the fuck thought of that combination the eyes i'm going to use igneous cosmetics which is a canadian indie brand and my lovely friend from chronically chic influenced me to buy these well not specifically this shade but igneous cosmetics in general because she kept raving about them on her channel and legit igneous cosmetics was the first indie brand that i tried out they like popped my indie cherry blending brush i'm going to take the shade surprise which is a uh, pink with an orange flip and use it as my crease color and look how pretty that flip is and with a fat, flat packing brush, I'm taking the same and adding it to the inner and outer corners of my eye. Should really grab this mirror closer to me because I can't see shit. Put this on the lid as well. But this is not going to be the star of the show today although i do use it as a one shadow look quite often now i am going to take the shade african amethyst which you can see over here which is a beautiful purple and uh liana 
iconically chic i mean kept talking about this shade and i am such a sucker for purples like sign me the fuck up she said it was her favorite purple of life and you know i'm convinced like this is such a nice shade so i'm gonna i'm gonna blend it out later don't get scared I'm gonna pop this in the inner and outer corners. I want it on my lower lash line as well. Also, is it just me or like whenever I do my lower lash line or my mascara, I'm like fish facing it. They take a clean blending brush and start blending out the edges of this purple. And I'm going to add a bit more just to darken things up. Same location as before. Inner corner, outer corner. And I think I fucked up, but it's okay. We're gonna fix that eventually. Somehow. Maybe. So I swear to God, that is not a child. That is my fat cat being dramatic. So see what I really like about this? They're so easy to blend. Like all I did was... One, two, done, blend it out. Which you know can tend to uh, go towards over blending, but if you're careful, you're you're gonna do you're gonna do okay. And then I'm going to pop right in the middle the ColourPop Super Shock Shadow in Frog, which I purchased because of Cosmetic Chaos here on YouTube. She mentioned it in one of her favorites, I believe, and I fell in love with how glittery and beautiful and wet it looked and I mean let's be serious if you say glitter three times in front of a mirror I appear into your house I eat all of the food in your fridge I hype you up a bit and then I'll probably just like pet all of the cats in your neighborhood so now that we are bright and beautiful and shiny I'm going to add a liner which yes is a rarity on this channel mostly because I cannot be arsed I'm going to use the NYX Epic Ink Liner, which I bought because of my friend um, Alexandria, whose channel is now named uh, Eyes of Alexandria. So let, let's think, what, what do we want to do? I don't think I'm gonna do a full liner, I think I'm gonna just align the inner corner and a bit of the outside. So um, excuse me for a tidbit. One eternity later. Now I'm done, I'm not particularly in love with how the eyeliner came out and I probably fucked up my look, but I think it's law to like fuck up perfectly pretty looks with eyeliner. It's it's like it's like one of the secret commandments aside from the you know ten ones that Moses received. So it's like love thy neighbor, thou shall not kill, and thou shall fuck up perfectly good looks with eyeliner. Let's add some mascara. This is the Urban Decay Per version. My friend Alex the Alchemist talked about this and uh, I really like this because it's very, a uh, very thin consistency, very light and airy. You barely feel it on your lashes. It's very pretty for an all natural sort of look. Not a lot of volume and not a lot of length. But uh, blackens the lashes nicely, nice separation. As I said, a very feathery, uh, natural sort of look. And here we go, I look complete. Let's uh, finish up the face. Blush, I'm going to use the Rimmel Maxi Blush in 006 Exposed, which again, I bought, I bought because of Alana Len. As you can see, I've got a pattern, I keep buying shit that she suggests like she and mariah leonard i told you they could uh sell me paint and i'd buy it and i really like this very nice very pigmented very blendable just gonna add this to the cheeks drape it a bit to the forehead a bit to the nose to tie the look together a bit to the chin and there we go we are nice and glowy and pink faced and now la pièce de résistance this is the pixie by petra glowy gossamer duo in a delicate dew and i bought this because of paulina beauty she actually went through an entire highlighter of these and i love them like she was so right these can either 
be subtle-ish or built up to be blinding if you use a flat brush like this like I do they're gonna be more subtle but the tinier and the more precise br brush you get the more they're gonna glow up and they sink in really nicely into the skin very nice to layer them I really do adore them I'm so happy about them because of her and now that we are glowy but we need to set everything I pray that my mascara dried out I really did not think this through so I've got the max fix plus the coconut version and I decanted it into this NYX dewy finish uh, packaging because the sprayer on the max fix plus trash <laughs> And to be honest, the MAC Fix Plus, I don't think it's worth it. I mean, it's okay, but honestly, I like the NYX Dewy Finish Setting Spray just as much for both setting my face and shadow work, so I'm not convinced. For lipstick, I'm going to use the Makeup Revolution Lipstick in Chauffeur which is said to be a Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk dupe. It's a very nice matte, uh, dusty pink sort of shade. And I bought this because of Soph Does Nails. And I think uh, most of Makeup Revolution shit I buy, I buy because of her. It's all her fault. Basically, this is it. Okay guys, this is the final look. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave me a thumbs up, maybe a comment, or, you know, don't. Whatever it floats your boat. Again, thank you so much for watching. I hope I'll see you guys the next time. And please, uh, do me a favor. Go ahead, have a nice evening, morning, or whatever it is where you're from. Bye!